President Trump's defense team making their case for the Senate to acquit their client on two impeachment articles. The president's attorney is accusing Democratic impeachment managers of cherry picking that July phone call with Ukraine's president. Let's bring in our legal panel now. Mercedes Collin is here. She's a Fox News legal analyst. Alex Little also with us. He's a partner for Burr and Foreman LLP, a former prosecutor and former assistant U.S. attorney. Good to see both of you. Good evening. Great to see you. Well. I'm going to start with you, Mercedes. Let's sure. get your overall assessment. Slow rollout or slam dunk? Oh, it's definitely a slow rollout. I mean, for as a defense attorney, we're all waiting for are there going to be witnesses? Frankly, when we have clients that are accused of wrongdoing, one of the first ar arsenals and one of the first things we think about, what witnesses will to, can we have? Can we roll forward? But we, there's no mention of witnesses coming forward. Then you go to documentary evidence. So, frankly, just talking about today and just looking what they've said today, we're sort of anticipating what defense is there going to be. And if you don't have the witnesses and you don't have the evidence necessary or you have protections regarding this witness testimony and that you don't want to set forth these te this testimony because maybe it'll trigger some national security issue. Those are all considerations that frankly have to be in the mix. But at the end of the day, most people looking at this are going to say to themselves, where's the evidence? where's the defense and it's going to be the balance between the two. Alex, how do you see it? You know, what the president's legal team has to do is sort of walk this fine line. They don't have a very good argument on the facts. They also don't want more facts to come forward because if there's more revelations, that's not going to help the president. Um, and so they have to appear to at least be making a factual argument that he didn't do it at the same time without inviting the Senate to really ask for more information. So I don't envy the position they're in. Um, this is nothing like a criminal trial. The, the defense they're putting on uh, would fail miserably in front of regular jurors and regular courtrooms throughout the country. Uh, but they have a hard task in front of them. The one thing that's helpful to them is they've got a friendly audience. The majority of the people sitting before them are the same party as the president. They're Republicans. And so those Republicans don't want to convict the president. They don't want to remove him from office. And they're probably going to be willing to take this sort of half, you know, mealy mouth defense. Taking all of that into consideration, Alex, where will the president's defense team take their argument from here? Well, their argument is not really for um, any factual or legal question. They're, they have two, two main pieces to it. One is he didn't do what the House managers accuse him of doing. The second is, if he did, so what? Uh, and on the first part, they're going to say, you don't have the evidence, you don't have the facts. The problem there is there's going to be a motion to put those before the Senate, and they're going to fight against that. And so if those facts do come in, they're going to argue and say, well, so what? It doesn't really matter. He's the president. He can do those things, hoping that the senators won't feel compelled uh, to impeach on either ground. Mercedes, can the case already put forth by House Democrats um, hold up against the defense team arguments? I mean, this is a political process. I mean, it's exactly what Alex said. I mean, if we were trying to defend this in criminal court, <laughs> their expectation would be that we would set forth counter arguments, counter facts uh, in terms of trying to defeat the facts. And frankly, you can even look at this and say, where's the intent? Was there an intent to, ha to gain some political advantage? By saying to the president of Ukraine in that phone call, I'm going to hold back $391 million in military aid unless you go into the investigation and underline that ask was the intent to gain some political advantage. We don't know what the intent is. We, play you know, we don't have the testimony of, of the president to, to consider. So with just on the basis of what, what the Democrats have set forth the, thus far, we really have to do a wait and see and see what the Republicans will do and, and to counter those arguments. But a fail safe defense to something like this would be Where's the intent? If you're looking, you can have two, int two intentions in that phone call. You can either look to see if we, we as a country are investing nearly $400 million in military aid to a corrupt country, or the counter argument is, which would be unlawful, I'm seeking to, to get a political advantage by getting information regarding a political rival from a foreign country. Alex, I'm going to get you in, but I want to place more uh, sound from Pat Cipollone uh, regarding that July 25th call with, uh, he, he says there was an invite to the White House. Listen. Going back to the transcript of the July 25th call, again, a part of the call that they didn't talk to you about, President Trump said, whenever would, you would like to come to the White House, feel free to call. Give us a date. 
and we'll work that out. I look forward to seeing you. Alex, getting you back in and picking up on yeah. where Mercedes left off, she talked about intent. What's your take look, on intent? Pat Cipollone is lying to the American public. He's lying to the Senate. They've been lying throughout their entire defense. It is relying upon misconstruing the factual record. What we know from all the witnesses who testified before the House is there was a clear effort across the executive branch to freeze out this money and to pressure the Ukrainians, not for an investigation, but for an announcement of an investigation that was led by the president's own personal attorney. There's no real question about that. The Republicans don't like those facts. That's why they don't want the testimony of John Bolton, who called this a drug deal. I mean, the national security advisor to the president of the United States called this a drug deal. And you don't, and the Republicans and the president doesn't want you to hear that if you're a sitting senator. Alex? So the facts aren't really in question. Okay, I'm, I'm out of time. I started with you, Mercedes. I'll let Alex sure. have the, the last word on this one. Thanks to, to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you.